chapter 15, Goldrot's the goal. This is it. This is the best chapter in the book. Uh, you know what, I probably say that about every third chapter, but this is a great chapter. Rogo wakes up, he's out on a scout trip with his son, Davey. Uh, the previous night, which was chapter 14, he had the scouts play this wacky dice game. The chapter before that, we met Fat Herbie, who was the constraint to the, cal to the troop being able to finish their walk. A uh, couple chapters prior to that, we met with Jonah at the New York location, and he introduced this concept of dependent events and statistical fluctuations. And what the author, what Goldratt has done for us over the past couple chapters is really set up and established like, hey, this is a problem, right? He has set up that this is a constraint, that this concept is a constraint, and that if you don't know that this concept is a constraint, you're gonna have a lot of blind spots and how you address fixing things and improving things, both in your plant and in your life. So what Goldrot does in this chapter is he gives us a way to solve this problem. So the, the scouts set out on their hike and then we, we kind of go into problem solving mode. And it's, I just love this chapter. There's some endearing phrases. It's, it's, it's touching, it's moving. Uh, Goldrot takes a lot of flack for calling the book a love story. Uh, I think there's a lot of love in this chapter. So what do we see the, the hero, Alex Rogo, do? Um, he, first off, he admits that Herbie is the slowest. Second is he starts to discuss why is Herbie the slowest. And third, he gets into an Udo loop. So observe, orient, decide, act. How do we help Herbie go faster? Uh, so he keeps implementing solutions and just getting it done. So what we find is uh, Herbie's, Herbie wants to go faster, right? The, Herbie knows that he's the slowest and even starts off with uh, saying some, some touching things. Since he knows he's gonna be slow, he says, I just thought I'd stay back here with you, Mr. Rogo. This way I won't hold anybody up. Uh, Rogo, meanwhile, as he's walking with Herbie, has all this imagery of his plant and you know how would his plant be handling it if one part was, was running behind. You know, you'd be pulling people from accounting, you'd be pulling people out of customer service to go help their coworkers. Um, and there he says, again, he continues to get more insights. He says, in fact, whoever is moving the slowest in the troop is the one who will govern throughput. So again, we're tying it back to those three phrases that we talked about earlier um, with throughput, net income, and then cash generation is the, the three terms that we wanna focus on from a cost accounting standpoint. And he says, again, page 116, up front, you've got some kid who wants to set a speed record and here you are stuck behind fat Herbie, the slowest kid in the world, Woods. So on page 117, he starts going through Herbie's backpack with him. He finds a frying pan. You know, why is Herbie out hiking? With, why would you give the slowest kid all the weight? So again, they just kind of start to do the obvious things. They start to unburden the constraint. So if Herbie is the constraint in the first place, don't give him a heavier load, split that load up, divide it amongst the other scouts. And this is just a wonderful metaphor for the theory of constraints. It shows exactly how everyone uh, should go about dealing with a constraint is if you, once you identify that constraint, find ways to lessen its burden. There are a bunch of touching moments in there. Again, Herbie kind of recognizing he's the constraint, not wanting to be it. The one that always makes me uh, get a tear in my eye, and Davy says it actually earlier in chapter 13 as well. He looks at Alex Rogo and he says, you know, dad, I was really proud of you today. So I'd like to think that's not just that uh, Alex Rogo shows up and is the adult volunteer on a scout hike at the start of chapter 13 with no warning, uh, but then that he goes through and does what an adult leader should do uh, when you're out with a group of young people, he helps them solve problems, right? And he helps them uncover a constraint and he helps them work together as a team. Can't say enough good things about chapter 15. Can't say enough good things about the goal. Appreciate the listens and the clicks and uh, smash that like button with everything that you're doing here. But really go read the book. It's a great read.